Hi, my name is Clara Folk, and today I'm here to talk about the new type safety feature for Navigation Compose. In Navigation version 2.8, we added new TypeSafe APIs to the library. The goal of TypeSafe APIs is to provide compile time type safety in Kotlin DSL when you define your nav destinations and arguments, and when you read passed in argument values. First, what is navigation with Kotlin DSL? Kotlin DSL allows you to define your nav graph directly in your Kotlin source code, and it works especially well with Compose's declarative approach for the UI. This navigation system is built based on string roots. Before we dive into the new type safe features, let's look at how the old string based navigation works. In your source code, you set up your base graph by creating a nav host and designating a start destination. And then you can add composable destinations within your nav host by calling composable and defining this destination's unique root. You can also declare nav arguments for this destination so that you can pass arguments around when navigating. To read the passed in argument, every composable has content lambda, which provides you with the nav backstack entry. You can access the entry's arguments property to retrieve the argument value and pass it to your composable. However, you'll notice that roots and arguments are declared in strings, and this causes one issue, lack of compile time type safety. For example, when you navigate, you may accidentally pass in alphanumerics for an integer argument, and you may not realize that until runtime when navigation crashes. So how can navigation in Kotlin DSL provide type safety? We explored several ways to do that, including Kotlin compiler plugins and annotation processors. In the end, we decided on a solution based on the Kotlin X serialization library. One of the key principles of the navigation library is to minimize how infectious navigation code is. This helps with code maintenance and testing, and also makes it easier to swap out your navigation library for another one. A solution based on serialization helps prevent navigation code from spreading throughout your code base. For example, to declare a type-safe nav destination, you simply need to declare an object or class and then annotate it with at serializable, and that's it. You'll notice that this does not require any navigation dependency or elements. The destination definition is completely independent of the navigation library. To use a new type safe feature, all you need to do is add the Kotlin X serialization plugin in your Gradle build file, and then import the library dependency. So how does serialization help with type safety? Well, as discussed earlier, navigation in Kotlin DSL is built upon string roots and URLs. You'll recall in the example earlier that you define destinations with a URL as the root. Destination routes are also used to navigate around the app. The new type safe solution is a new layer added on top of the string-based navigation system. It takes a Kotlin class instance or object, in particular, its fully qualified name and fields, and then internally serializes it into a string. For example, let's say you declare a nav destination called home with an integer argument. When you give us a class instance of home with ID equals one, two, three, we take its fully qualified name and the provided ID and serialize it into the string com.package.home slash one, two, three. Under the hood, the string is used as the root in the underlying string-based system. And when we want to retrieve the arguments from the URL, we deserialize the string back into the original class instance or object. For example, with the serialized string from earlier, Internally, navigation deserializes it back into the home class instance for you. As a library user, you will only ever have to interact with Kotlin objects, which inherently ensures type safety. For this new feature, we added type safe overloads for existing navigation APIs that take in string roots. This applies across the main navigation modules, including runtime, compose, activities, and dynamic features. Now, let's take a closer look at the main type safety APIs for Navigation Compose. To demonstrate the new APIs, let's imagine we're building a messaging app with a screen showing a list of open conversations. First, let's declare a root called conversation list. We must annotate this with add serializable so that internally, the navigation library can serialize this object into a string root. Next, we define a base graph by calling nav host and we'll pass in our conversation list as the start destination. After that, we need to add the composable destination that's associated with this root. 
We'll call NavGraph Builder's composable API and pass in conversation list as a type parameter. This type parameter defines the unique root for this composable. And you'll notice that you no longer need to provide a string root. Last but not least, in the content lambda, you will declare the screen content for this destination. And now you have a basic graph for displaying a list of messages. But what if you want to show a particular conversation? For example, the user wants to click on an item in the list and open up the actual conversation. To support that, let's define a second root called conversation. And this root contains an integer argument called ID. This argument is the conversation ID that can be used to load a specific conversation from the data source. As with the first destination, we'll call composable to add a second destination and set up conversation as its unique root. Now, let's go back to your conversation list. To navigate when clicking on an item, you can set up an on-click listener so that upon click, it'll navigate to the selected conversation. Here, you need to pass in the route to navigate to, which should be an instance of the conversation route containing the ID of the selected conversation. Note that you must navigate with an instance of the defined route. What this means is, if the route were an object declaration, you can directly pass that in. However, if the root were a class, you must create and pass in an instance of that class. Next, how do we retrieve and use enough arguments that were passed in? To support type safety, we added a new extension function for nav backstack entry called toRoot, which returns the root instance that was used to navigate with. For example, in our conversation destination, we take the nav backstack entry provided by the composables content lambda and call toRoot on it. And then we can use this restored object just like any other call in objects. We can call conversation.id to read the ID that was passed in. This two root API also extends to safe state handle. If you use view models with safe state handle, in your view model, you can call safe state handle.to root. And similar to before, this will also recreate and return the conversation object. Next, Let's say you want to expand your app by adding a profile screen to display the information of the logged in user. And you also want to support navigation between conversations and profile with a bottom nav bar. To start, let's restructure our current graph. Within nav host, we'll create two nested graphs, one for the conversation related screens and one for profile. The conversation graph will host the conversation lists and conversation destinations. The profile graph will host the profile destination. Then we'll add a bottom nav bar containing two tabs. The first tab navigates to conversation graph, and the second navigates to profile graph. In terms of code, we want the resulting nav host to contain the conversation graph and profile graph. But why nested graphs? First, it allows for separate backstacks within each tab, which will make it easier to manage saving and restoring states. Secondly, the nested graphs create a hierarchy between your destinations, which will facilitate the bottom nav bar implementation later on. Let's look at how to create this in your code. First, define the routes for a conversation graph, profile graph, and profile. We then create the nested conversation graph with a nav graph builder extension called conversation graph. Within this, we call the navigation API and pass in conversation graph as its unique route. Next, we move the two conversation destinations we have created earlier into this nested graph. Last, we set this graph start destination to conversation list. And within the original nav host, you can now simply call conversation graph function to set up the first nested graph. We should also update the nav host's start destination to conversation graph. Repeat the process with profile graph and profile, and you will end up with this nav host. With a graph in place, we're now ready to implement our bottom nav. Start by declaring a list of bottom nav destinations, which in our app will be conversation graph and profile graph. Inside your bottom navigation, whenever the user makes a selection, you'd want to update the bottom nav to reflect the current selection. But to do that, bottom nav needs to know which destination is currently selected. First, grab the current backstack entry and read your current destination from it. Then iterate through the list of possible destinations. For each, we'll check if it matches our current destination or any destination within its hierarchy.
A match would reflect the current selected destination. A destination's hierarchy is a chain of its parents within the NAV host. Take conversation list as an example. Its hierarchy would include conversation list, conversation graph, and the base NAV host graph. You'll notice that because of the nested graph structure, conversation list and conversation actually share the same hierarchy. This means if you were on either destination, the conversation graph would still be selected. But how can we assert against the destination's root? This is where the new nav destination dot has root API comes in. Within the current destination hierarchy, we check if any of the destinations has the root of the candidate destination. We do this by calling has root and passing in candidates K class. If one of them returns true, then we have found the current selected bottom nav destination. Last but not least, let's talk about deep links. How does deep link fit into type safety when you no longer use string roots? And what happens if your deep link has arguments? Let's take a look at the profile screen. By default, the profile screen links to the profile of the logged in user. But now you want to make this destination more reusable by enabling external sources to deep link into the profile of any user. First, let's update profile destination into a data class with an integer argument called profile ID. This ID is the unique identifier of a user. To keep profile defaulted to the logged in user, we can set its default value to be the logged in user's profile ID. Also, since profile now contains an argument, we need to update the profile graph. Its start destination needs to be updated from a reference to profile to an instance of the profile class. Since profile ID already has a default value, you may choose to omit providing a profile ID in the start destination. You'll note that similar to when you navigate, you need to pass a class instance for the start destination. In general, whenever you're required to provide arguments in your start destination, you do so by providing an instance of the root. And if your root does not have an argument, you can pass in the root's K class. Now let's add a deep link to the profile destination. Composable destinations have a deep links parameter that takes in a list of nav deep links associated with this destination. We'll call list of and call the nav deep link builder with profile as a type parameter. Then we need to declare the custom base path for this deep link. For example, we'll use example.com slash messages slash profile. But what about the profile ID argument? The builder will auto-generate the argument parameter based on the profile class and then append it to the base path for you. What exactly does this mean? First, the deep link URL would often contain additional information following the base path. These are called URL parameters. They can serve many purposes, such as arguments for filtering or keywords for searches. In general, URLs can contain two types of parameters, path parameters and query parameters. Path parameters usually represent required arguments and cannot be omitted from the URL. Query parameters usually represent optional argument and can be left out from the URL. In navigation, type safe deep link generation is based on these conventions. This means root arguments are primarily treated as path parameters unless they fulfill two conditions, which will then make them query parameters. The first is if they are optional arguments, which are arguments with default values, such as our profile ID, which defaults to the logged in user. The second condition is if their nav type is of collection nav type, such as lists of primitives. If an argument meets either condition, it'll be treated as a query parameter. But regardless of path or query, all parameters are appended by the order of their declaration in the class. Let's look at an example with path parameters. Imagine if our chat app has a friend list destination and its roots contain two arguments, profile ID and is private. As you can see, neither argument has a default value and neither of them are a collection. So they are both path parameters. Furthermore, the profile ID field is declared first within the class. So it'll be appended first and is private will be appended second. So if the base path is example.com slash friend list, the generated deep link will be example.com slash friend list slash placeholder for profile ID slash placeholder for is private. 
As for query parameters, let's go back to our profile class. Since profile ID has a default value, it's an optional argument, which means this is a query parameter. By convention, query parameters start with a question mark after the path. So our generated profile deep link will begin with www.example.com slash messages slash profile question mark. And then we append the query. The resulting deep link will be example.com slash messages slash profile question mark profile ID equals placeholder for profile ID. This generated deep link can then be used to navigate to the profile of any user. The APIs we discussed today should set you off to a good start with navigation type safety in Compose. To recap, we talked about how type safety based on serialization helps prevent infectious navigation code. We discussed how to declare your route with the add serializable annotation and how to define composable destinations with the composable API while passing in its route through the type parameter. We went through reading arguments with the new two root APIs for nav backstack entry and save state handle. We also talked about setting up your bottom nav by leveraging nested graphs and the nav destination dot has root API. Lastly, we saw examples on how to add deep links. And that's it for today. Thanks for staying till the end. Last but not least, if you found this content useful, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more future content. Thank you.